I made um, a slight error when I put this study guide together in that for this particular problem, I gave you the combustion reaction. And in the future for the study guide, I won't do that because a combustion reaction is one of the things I do expect you to know. We did go over it last chapter. And what you really need to know for a combustion reaction, this is like a ginormous hint, so make sure you know. So whenever you burn some carbon-based thing, carbon thing, you always have to use oxygen. If you don't have oxygen, you cannot burn. The products never change. They're always carbon dioxide and water. Now, assuming that you've already read this problem, this word right here is a big hint for you. Unbalanced. You cannot do stoichiometry. You cannot do mole to mole relationships unless the equation is balanced. A combustion reaction always balance the carbons first, then balance the hydrogens, then balance the oxygens. Have it for oxygen to write O2 down there. Okay, so the carbon, we have three carbons on the reactant side, so I'm going to put a three here to give me three on the product side. I have eight hydrogens on the reactant side, so I'm going to put a four here to show the eight hydrogens. Over here now, let's see oxygens. 3 times 2 makes 6 oxygens and 4 here, so I need 4 oxygens. No, I lied. <laughs> That's hilarious. Okay, so let's look again. 3 times 2 is 6 and 4 times 1 is 4, so that's a total of 10 oxygens. And to get 10 oxygens over here, I certainly don't need 4. I need a, yeah, I need a 5. 5 oxygens. 5 times 2 10 oxygens on the reactant side, I'm good to go. The next step is, what do we have? Well, we have 15.23 grams of propane, so I'm going to write that right underneath the propane. And I'm trying to find the mass of oxygen, so question mark grams. And you need to make a plan, some sort of plan to figure out how you're going to solve this problem. And pause it, see if you can write the plan. My plan is I'm going to go from grams of propane, which is what's been given, to moles of propane. And once I have moles of propane, I can then go to moles of oxygen. Once I have moles of oxygen, I can then go to grams of oxygen. So I'm now ready to officially start this problem. Try the dimensional analysis. Pause the video. See if you can run it. I have 15.23 grams of propane. And this problem is going to require a long, hopefully straight line. Not bad. Let's see if I can make... Okay, that one's horrible. If grams of propane is up here, as it is, it has to go down there. That's the unit that you have to chase down. The plan says to go from grams of propane to moles of propane. Moles of propane is there on the top, so you have to chase that unit down. Please don't get lazy and skip writing the units. That's where kids make mistakes is they just start blowing off the units and just writing stuff down because they're not chasing the units or following the plan. All right, the plan says go from moles of propane to moles of oxygen, so moles of O2. Notice moles of O2 is now up here, so you got to chase that unit down, moles of O2. And the plan says we're going to go from moles of O2 to grams of O2. Ask yourself, do those units cancel? Am I left with the units I want? Let's see, grams of propane, they canceled. Moles of propane, they canceled. Moles of oxygen, canceled. Is this the unit you want for your final answer? Yes, indeedy do it is. So our last step then, well, I guess it's not really the last step, but our next step, put in the numbers. How are you going to find the numbers for grams to moles? That's the molar mass. you got to plug in the molar mass for propane. Well, you end up with 44.09 grams of propane for one mole. Molar mass is always going to be per one mole.
grams to mole, one mole. When you have moles to moles, this is the molar ratio that comes from the balanced equation. And you look at the coefficients. The coefficient in front of propane is this invisible one here, so I'm going to put a one. And the coefficient in front of oxygen, well, that's this five up here. So I'm going to write a five. Down here, moles to grams. Oh, grams to moles. Molar mass, one mole and oxygen comes out to be 32 grams of oxygen. So take a minute and run the calculations. Okay, so to, re, um, to do the math, well, the first thing you need to do is get out the handy dandy calculator. I'm looking for my pen, there we go. And multiply everything across the top, hit enter, and then divide by 44.09. When you do that, you will end up with 55.2 now let's make it seven grams of oxygen. And the last step again is to check your significant figures. In this case, there are four significant figures given. So we should have four significant figures in our final answer. And ladies and gentlemen, we are done with problem number four. And I am sorry, I pushed ahead on that one, but if you need it again, that final answer was 15.27 grams of propane. And I'm sure you can pause the video and go back and take a look at that problem and see how we did that one. Now let's take a look at problem number five. Problem number five represents reactants in the synthesis of water. Again, this goes back to chapter eight. What is a synthesis reaction? And a synthesis reaction means that you take elements to make one product. And the one product in this case is water. And to synthesize water from its elements, there's two really good hints given in the problem. There's a set of double balls here and there's a set of even bigger double balls here. So we know that the elements have to be two things put together. So one of them, hydrogen, it has to be hydrogen. Elemental hydrogen is one of the big seven. It's a diatomic, H2. And then we have oxygen, which is the other diatomic, O2. And then the next thing to do is to balance this equation. So we have, let's see, two oxygens on the reactant side, but only one on the product. So I guess I should put a two here. That gives me my two. And then two times two is four hydrogens, and I don't have four hydrogens on the reactant side. So I better put a two there. That gives me four. I'm now balanced. You can look at the picture as a hint. That's not a problem. So now that we have that, we can move forward to the next step for number five. I'm going to go ahead and rewrite the equation. Two hydrogens plus two oxygens yields two waters. Now we have to draw a picture showing the products and leftover reactant. This says for every two hydrogens, we need one oxygen. So hydrogen's the little guy. Hydrogen's always the little guy. So we can take two hydrogens, any two. I'm going to cross off this one, cross off this one, and let's uh, cross off the oxygen. I guess red wasn't a really good choice there. So let's cross off two hydrogens and cross off one oxygen. Those are going to be used up in the reaction, and they are going to make two waters. So let's make two waters, and they kind of look like Mickey Mouse. So there's one, and there's two waters. Now we can go back to the reactants. We again can use two hydrogens for every one oxygen. Doesn't matter which two you choose, cross those out. And that's going to make two more water molecules. Go back to the reactants. Again, two hydrogens for one oxygen. So two hydrogens get crossed off and one oxygen. 
And we are going to make some more waters. One, another water. Another water. We go back and do it again because we're not done yet. We still have reactants. Okay, two hydrogens, one oxygen. Go back to the product side. We made two more waters. And back to the reactant side and cross off. Two more hydrogens, one oxygen. Go back over to the product side. Make two more waters. Now we're going to go back over to the reactant side and oh, looky there. We have used up all of the hydrogen. No more. Hydrogen is now all gone. We are finished. We can't make any more product. But notice the directions say, and any leftover reactant. So we do have to write the two sets of oxygen. These guys don't change. I mean, they're diatomics over here on the reactant. They're still diatomics over here on the product side. Now we're done with that part of number five. So the last part says, identify the limiting reactant. Well, what did we run out of? Well, we ran out of hydrogen. We couldn't run the reaction anymore. And how many molecules of the excess reactant were left? Well, the excess reactant was oxygen, and we were left with two oxygens at the end. Problem number five is now complete. Any questions you might have, please jot those down, bring them into class. I'd be happy to talk to you about those. For number six, it puts a lot of these concepts all together in one problem. And I think that's part of what makes this problem difficult. The first thing we need to look at is the words theoretical yield. Theoretical yield of iron. What this is saying is, look, how many grams of iron would you make if you could make your lab work as good as the math says it should be? Now, you know, if I was a rock star lab person, man, that'd be amazing. I'm not that good. But in a theoretical world, how much should you make? So I'm after grams of iron. And I've been given 254 grams of this guy, 254 grams. And I've been given 25 grams of this guy. Oh, snap. Should be what you're thinking because, you know, you, you don't have anybody in excess or at least I don't know who's in excess. Like in the first problem, I could cross somebody off and go, hey, I'm just going to ignore this guy. I can't do that in this problem. I have no clue who's going to control the amount of product I make. So this problem becomes a limiting reactant problem. And you have to figure that out first. To do that, your first step is to get each of your reactants to moles. 254 grams. Hey, you try it. Pause the video. See if you can get these each of these reactants to moles. One step. Grams to moles. Easy peasy. Just pause it. Give it a try. Okay, well, I'm going to do it. 254 grams of this guy. Oh, I didn't write that. can't believe I didn't do that. that. That's just, okay, well, that's how you erase everything. Okay, so 254 grams of this, 25 grams of this, and grams of this. Limiting reactant. 254 grams of Fe2O3 and I'm trying to get it to moles so we need if we do the molar mass it comes out to 159.7 grams of Fe2O3 for every one mole of Fe2O3 and that yields one point, well, yields is not the right word. It equals 1.59 moles of Fe2O3. Now I'm going to do the same thing for the carbon. 25 grams of carbon. 12.01 grams of carbon for one mole of carbon. And let's see, the grams canceled. Should have done that up here. Grams cancel and I'm left with 2.08 moles of carbon. Cool. Any questions about that step? Jot the question down if you need to. We'll, we'll answer that. Now, who's the limiting reactant? Hmm. 
can't tell. Because this is just like the grammage, you know? You got mollage. This is this is just what we have. It's it's converted to grams, but it's still what we have. We don't know who we're going to run out of. It doesn't matter which one of these you pick. We need to do a mole ratio. And, and I usually use the, the second one I did because the number's still in my calculator. So don't have to punch anything new in. It doesn't matter. So I'm going to take the 2.08 moles of carbon. And the question I'm trying to answer is, if I use up all of this carbon, how much of the Fe2O3 do I really need to make all of this carbon go away? And that's a mole ratio. So moles of carbon here to moles of carbon down here. And I need to find out how much of the Fe2O3 do I actually need to make all of that carbon go away. So moles of Fe2 O3. We're still just playing with the reactants. I haven't even considered how to get to iron yet. To put the numbers in, I look at the coefficients because it's a mole to mole ratio. Here I have three carbons, so I'm going to put three here. Over here I have two irons, so I'm going to put a two here. I'm going to punch all that into my calculator, and I end up with 1.39 moles of Fe2. O3 that I need if I want all of the carbon to go away. Do I have enough Fe2O3 to use up all of this carbon that I have? I absolutely do, which means I'm going to run out of the carbon first. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to introduce you to the limiting reactant. Yay! It's carbon. This guy in terms of making the amount of iron possible, the Fe2O3 does not make a difference. It's the carbon that controls the quantity of product. So now I'm ready to make a plan. And I'm going to fast forward the, to a brand new slide so that we don't have all this ink here and I don't have to erase it either. So let's go on to the other slide and see, while I do that, if you can make a plan, how are you going to go now from grams of carbon to grams of iron? As I said on the previous slide, we had to find the limiting reactant. And from the limiting reactant step we just did, I discovered that the carbon was the limiting reactant. So we have 2.08 moles of carbon. And I need to know how many grams of iron I can make. So I need a plan. And the plan is to go from moles of carbon to moles of iron to grams of iron. If you now know the plan, can you set up the dimensional analysis? Give it a try. Me, I'm going to do it. So 2.08 moles of carbon. And the moles of carbon's here, so I've got to chase the unit down. Moles of carbon. And the plan says go to moles of iron. And then the plan says moles of iron to grams, so they got to chase that unit down. Moles of iron. The plan says we're going to grams of iron. And do the units cancel? Well, let's see. We have to look at those units. Do they cancel? Okay, so I've got moles to moles. Moles here, moles here, grams. Oh, awesome. We can we can plug in numbers. We're, we're good to roll now. So this number right here comes from the balanced equation. I have three carbons. This number right here comes from the iron. Nope, wrong one. It comes from this iron, so we need a 4 there. And grams to moles, that's the molar mass again. One mole, always. And then 55.85 grams of iron here. And now you can plug that into your calculators. And when you do that, let's see what you get. When you plug that all into your calculators, then you get 
nine grams of iron. Now you have to refer back to the original problem to see how many significant figures you needed. Um, I know that it said we needed three sig figs, so my final answer comes out to be 155 grams of iron is your final answer for the theoretical yield of iron. That is, in a perfect world, that's how much iron this chemical reaction should make. This problem threw a lot of you. Uh, because we're looking at how much of that leftover react. And if you refer back to the water problem, you could see, hey, I got two little molecules of oxygen left over. I can see it plain as day. I got that. This one's a little more difficult because it's not something you can actually see. You actually have to do the math. So on this problem, what we need to do is we've used up all of the carbon and that one's gone. I could care less. I've already solved how much product I needed. Don't worry about that anymore. So the only thing I'm really looking at is how much of this excess reactant we used and how much is left. I know that we started out with 254 grams of that guy. And from there, we converted it to moles. And we already know that we have 1.59 moles of Fe2O3. We converted that a couple slides ago. And when we were looking to see who the limiting reactant was, we discovered that in order to make all of the 2.08 moles of carbon disappear, that we needed 1.39 moles. This is what we had. And we needed 1.39 moles of the Fe2O3. This is what we needed to make all of the carbon disappear. So this became not needed anymore, but used. So if we started with this many moles and we used this many moles, yeah, you probably guessed it already. You simply subtract those to find out how many moles are left over. So we have 0 0.200 moles following the rules of sig figs, of Fe2O3 left over. And I need grammage. So, those are wonderfully crooked lines. Sorry about that. So again, moles here. We're going to bring the moles down here of Fe2O3. Converting it to grams of Fe2O3. Molar mass, we've already calculated that. We know that one mole is equal to 159.7 grams, and we end up with 31.9 grams of Fe2O3 left over. The easy one of this, because recall that it said how much of each reactant was left over. Each one. Well, this guy's our limiting reactant, remember? So how much of that is left? None. Not a zilch. We used it all. Zero grams of carbon are left over at the end. The limiting reactant? Easy. None. Not a. It's the one that's in excess that takes a little bit of work. From the last problem then, we need to compare the theoretical yield of iron to the actual yield of iron. And this problem says a careless chemistry student came up with 420 grams of iron. Okay, this guy was so careless, I don't even know where he got it. Because if you recall, we started with 254 grams of one reactant and 25 grams of the other reactant. So I have no clue how he ended up creating mass. However, if that's what his data came out to be, we kind of have to go with it as crazy as that number is. But the point is, you do need to know the formula. The formula, I mean, it, it makes sense because we want a percent. The percent yield, whenever you do a percent, I don't care what it is, but whenever you do a percent, it's always going to be part over the whole 
times 100, and that'll give you your percent. Now, let me translate this into the chemistry words. In this case, the part should be, should be less than what the math says you should make. You know, you spill some on the counter, you can't always get things out of your beaker, but your actual yield, yeah, that's, that's an A, yeah. Your actual, okay, I'll just try that again. Your actual yield should, should be less than your theoretical yield. If it is greater than like this, this moron up here, 420, I, I don't know what he did. I have no idea what's in his lab, but we're going to run with it. But the actual over the theoretical. Because the theoretical should be the maximum amount possibly made in a chemical reaction. If you're a chemical engineer, you do want these numbers as close together as possible. You don't want a lot of waste in your chemical reactions. But it's the actual over the theoretical then times 100 will equal the percent yield. So in this case, and we're going to run with this number, 420 divided by, now what was that actual yield we had for iron? Yes, it was 155 grams. And the grams will cancel. Percents do not have a unit other than the percent sign. Multiplied times 100, and what are we going to get? Yeah, you get a crazy number. I mean, there's no way this kid had more than 100% yield. And so, but, you know, hey, his data said 420. So he actually came up with, let's see, 271% yield. Wow. He created mass out of nowhere. Now, a more realistic example of this problem would be instead of that, say he came up with 42 grams of product. Now that number would be a number I could accept for this particular reaction. So if the number was 42 grams, his actual yield, 99% of the time, your actual yield should come out to be less than your theoretical, unless you're extremely careless. So if we run this, say, say another student had 42 grams for the actual yield, then we would have 42 divided by 155 times 100. And then in this case, then, what would be the answer? Yet yeah, technically, you shouldn't really have to punch this into your calculator because it's just a move of the decimal. But it's OK if you did. I mean, no sense, no, nothing wrong with being overly cautious. But you end up with 27.1% as your percent yield. That's not great. Like I said, you. If you really want these to be as close as possible for perfect lab work, but sometimes it just isn't going to happen. So this is the answer that you should have gotten. This is the answer that had I written the problem better, we would have gotten. So that concludes the study guide. If you have any questions on any of this, please don't hesitate to come see me. Otherwise, have a great day.